Hi, everyone, and welcome to Divinely Empowered with Antonia. Today, we have Jen, the renegade psychic. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jen is a little off. A little, little different than other people and doesn't have the same information as other people. Tell us a little bit about that, Jen. Well, I was never taught by any human uh, at all on the, my capability. I was uh, shown before I was even born to stay on the path of spirit only. And that has been my path. And that doesn't always uh, have the same information as humans would like me to go along with that protocol of how I see things and when I need to say it, you know, so it, I, I have an edge on me that that's sometimes people find it too true and they don't want to be in that process of who knows what's going to happen or what she's going to say, but it's completely raw and insightful towards that direction and that subject. So that's just the way my path has been my whole life. So humans in the way wasn't the priority. It was the getting the message and doing the path that I needed to get across and get the information. And then they, uh, they always told me at a young age, you will have swords and stones thrown at you, but I need you to stay clear on the path. We're behind you. And that was the, that was something that was always there. So I just stayed in that path consistently. And mm -hmm. But you really learn a lot when you start this at a very young age of trust right away. How old are you? When I, well, the first sound I heard was in my mom's stomach. And the voice was like, you're going to choose to be here now. I was very upset because I was like where I was was such a great energy and remembrance of that that you're just like, why? Why? Why did you take me out of this lovely light and this lovely energy and put place me here? So I came out kind of like, now, how do I get back? <laughs> That's all I wanted to do, get back. So how do I get back? <laughs> so you have to it's do the path. Easy, right? <laughs> I know, you right? Have to do those. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot. You're here to work. So, <laughs> so it, did, it did start at a young age and I, um, my mom could not contain me in our property or our house. I was always running off, adventuring, looking for stuff. And that just drove her nuts that she could not keep me in one place. But at the same thing was in the school too. They couldn't contain me. I was always doing my own thing, you know? So that was, that was hard for the teacher and the, and the parent because my mom couldn't explain. I don't know what to tell you. I can't get her. So she says, whatever is leading you is feels that has a bigger priority than your own parents and everybody around you, because I didn't care. I didn't care the repercussions either. I'm a bit like that. Just yeah. Out. Right. There's a drive inside that's different. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to manipulate me. I'm not very interested <laughs> in right. and consequences. I just go and do what my heart or God or whatever it is tells me to do, which I which I feel is on the, the side of truth and justice. And right. And, and that's that's the thing. You just keep going. And so it is. It's um some people relate like it's like you're autistic and you keep going on your own path and you don't really care about what dimension you're in or what they want. I'm like, well, yeah, we don't. We care about what we're supposed to do. I've got I've got this thing ingrained in me, which is the mission comes first. Like it's right. just so ingrained in my beingness that you know, whatever else is happening, whatever I'm suffering, or however things aren't going my way in whatever time, place situation mission comes first and you know there's been a lot I think anyone who's really on this journey and has been on it for a long time has had a lot of suffering you know it's not blooming easy to do it and to be coming out the other side it's it's not an easy thing really to know that God is boss and be working for source and nothing else and that being the priority in life beyond physicality family everything else in in this reality in the 3d source and what they want me to do is the only thing that really matters to be honest it is i actually sent you a picture of source 
Yeah, I saw yeah. some pictures you sent me a minute ago. Yeah. It's a single picture and it looks like it has a blue black uh, um, black background and then you'll see his eyes and everything. But yeah, so they show me and they're very um, angelic as in the, the strength of them and how tall they are and how elusive they are and how energy blows through them on everything. So, and that's, that's the thing is they look different. And so the first thing when I deal with any type of spiritual um, energy, I always get my mindset ready to identify it in the form that it is not the form that I am in, but the form that it shows me. And I think a lot of people just want it to look like us and it doesn't, not in any way. We put our own veils about what we're able to see. Right. And if you're Victim. seeing it through your, your lens of reality, then you're seeing it through your lens of reality. And if you can, if you can manage to lift that lens away, then you're going to get an entirely different vision. Yes, you do. And it's interesting what they show you. It's very interesting. And, uh, and it, it, stuff that you literally put a risk out there going, they are really going to think I'm batshit crazy when I throw this at you. But then what happens oh, no, is I, that, I've been on the crazy train forever. <laughs> right. And then when you draw it or put it out there mm. it, then you're waiting for it to um, show itself. And then it does. And you're just like blown away. Like, Whoa. And for the world to catch up. That's always yeah. been I've been waiting for the world to catch up because but the things I've been, you know, doing and saying for decades are just too ahead, too in advance for people to really comprehend. And they always were. <laughs> but this audience is much better, but it depends who you go. You right. get to get quite 3D people. Then they're like, yeah, she's just, just on a way. Right. And then the 5D people are like, damn, girl. That's <laughs> You can really tell where people are on their yeah. journey, whether the words just sound completely loopy loo or they sound like inspiring and helpful and fun and where we're the future. Mm. Yeah. And I'm very much about documenting it and seeing it come to pass. Yeah. I'm all about tons of documentation and, and it, and, and it works for me and I do see a lot of it. You and to like to do that there's a bravery side like i know that this looks nuts it feels nuts to me it feels uncomfortable to me but stuff it i'm just going to put it out there but there is a lot of bravery because a lot of people will just be naysayers but right how do you prove it and how else do you you know trust yourself and trust trust the god yeah i know it's crazy and i i went it was really funny because i went up uh to the keys which is a, a spiritual form of information and they're you know it was like i need to know because someone was like i think at this time was saying the play these were not good energy and like no way you're out of your mind so i went up there and they're like jenny don't worry about that you know the answer to that and then they they go i need you to look at antarctica i'm like but i came up here for this information i didn't come up for doing another assignment you know and then they're like i need you to look at this ruby lake oh okay sure in Antarctica? No, I don't think so. You know, and then I drew it. And then I had my, a lot of people, I said, I need to find this in this area. And, and I sent you those pictures of. You probably put, have you got them on your computer? I can do a screen share. You can pull it up on screen and show people. If you uh, want to not on this computer. I thought I put, I put it in your Instagram, but um, it's all over my Instagram, but yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, is I did the drawing and then I'm like, okay, I want to see the proof on this. And then uh, I had a friend of mine, she goes, we found it. And it's not even that. She goes, it Ruby Lake, Ruby Mound. It's red as a ruby. And I said, you better take pictures now because as soon as they find out we're digging in that area and looking on Google, they're going to take it down. And they did take part of it down. How red it was, how, and, you know, and I got pictures on. And they said, they, they're like, Jen, the Grand Canyon used to be the same. A, a ruby red river yes i know they found things in the grand canyon didn't they 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 found like an underground civilization in these huge tunnels and it had sort of egyptian things and amazing stuff in there like an explorer did and they brought the uh the smithsonian in and then 
Bye. Right. <laughs> it was in, like the ni- early 1900s that the yeah, and then it was suddenly like, oh no, no it was in newspapers in early. I think it was 1902 or something like that. It was around then, and it was yeah. in the newspapers. And then suddenly it just was, it just vanished. And there was miles and miles and miles of beds and tunnels and jewelry and all Egyptian artifacts. I think it was Egyptian and Native American combined. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing where it's even you giving the information out still shocks you. You're still in, uh, oh my gosh, you know, but that's that channel of information. And I, you know, I do uh, all kinds of artifacts for different corporations and looking for stuff where, where, and I, I do really good on that. And then this was, so it wasn't hard to, to see it, but then to actually see it. Uh, remote the line. For the people who are unfamiliar, so this would be a remote viewing. Right. So we're going to talk about more of your remote viewing in a moment. Go on. So, and then what happened was, and then they go, now you remember the queen, you remember the crown, the ruby right here, right on her crown. I go, yes. And he goes, and then look around and look for Ross Lake. And they showed me and it was like, it's actually Rose. And then all they put their name around everything they want to claim. So I went in that area. I was like, holy cow. And then there was the lake, you know, and it streams from one to another. And so I was like, what is the, why are you tra- showing me this? He goes, did you really think that everybody was after gold and silver? So I was like, wow. So, you know, I, you know, that's the thing is just some of the stuff you just come up with. And now I got all these people wanting to know where this is at. And I'm like, you're not going to exactly be able to get into the area and start digging, you know? So that's the, uh, that's the thing about it. No, they don't have security there. Okay, so um, let's talk about what you used to do. So you used to work with the police, or maybe you still do, but start, talk about some of your remote viewing and finding people and all that interesting stuff, please. I do something a little different because I don't do any locating when it comes to going anywhere. I do it from a raw view. All I need is the person that's passed on or is gone. And with doing really good with locating the bodies, I started actually drawing and put, um, putting a sketch together of the criminals. And I've had three or four cases prosecuted on case after case of the suspects. So how did and, just walk us through the whole, whole process? So what happened? Well, it's just because you're some cases you don't want, you know, I'm not, I don't avoid it. And then I, the image will come back. The image will come back. It'll come back. And they're like, you're not done. Yeah. But let's just start from the beginning. So what will happen is the police will commission you, ring you up and say, this person's is family. I usually get contact from the family because the family contact you when they're at their wits end. Okay. This is the thing that happens with this is the family contacts me. And then the, the cops have to assist me when after the fi- family contacts, it's like, you can't do anything. You can't find her. You need to do a sister. So I've had many cases. Uh, and I did one here locally. It was a woman and she was pregnant with a baby. And I didn't want the case. I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it locally. And I worked on that remote viewing for 24 hours. And uh, I did a drawing of the bridge, everything. And I had the family and the cops running out to the area, driving as fast as they could. And they were, they found, the family found her before cops did. So then I'm like, okay, good. I went to sleep. I woke up the next day and it was in the newspaper, that bridge, the whole thing. So then of course. Do you give people grid references or is it just pictures of like local landmarks or how does it all work? It is, you want to look at land and environments and layers. Everything's in a layer. And then there's three views that I look at it, very small, mid view, high view. So there's, and, but go in, I go in great details of where it's at. So that whole environment that I describe, you match it up and that's how it's able to interpret those areas and those target areas. And that's how it works. And I've had, I did another case where the mother came to me and she goes, I need to know if he killed himself. I go, I know he didn't. He did not hang himself from a slow branch. And then I did the drawing of the five suspects that were involved and they have already prosecuted four of them. 
And she goes, we went by your lead and they found them all. Um, and then I just draw them. I draw it as fast as I can. And then I hand it over to the family and they, they get it to the right person. And then they go through the prosecution. And then that, at that point, that's when the, the cops contact me. Do the police believe all this psychic stuff? They do when um, nothing's in the paper and the details, everything's in the details. Everything's in the documentation. When they're like, there's no way that you know all this without like being there almost. Um, and so, uh, so four of those were prosecuted and put in jail and then um, turned around. And then I had another one that a sister told me, you know, she called me up. She goes, they're saying he killed himself. I was like, no. So his roommate actually took off his truck and I said, when the cops catch him, he'll be in the truck and he'll kill himself right there. And he did. So the roommate killed him, the brother. And they turned that charge back not to suicide, it was to homicide. So I've helped reverse charges the way gotcha. it's, yeah. So, and it's not something with that, when I did it, I was running from it. I'm like, I don't do it. I don't want to do it. And then they kept just showing me over and over. So I think when it comes to cases, it's kind of chosen for you. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can, and I've seen this where people, when they do these cases, I call them money chasers, um, where you see these cases and then they contact the family. I, I never contact the family ever. I'm too busy and I would never do it. I've never done it that way. Um, and so then they contact me when they're at a desperate end of things. And I have had where I've gave locations to the cops and the next day they burnt the building down. I go, you're so dirty. And they, th th I mean, this was like a murder case on our Indian reservation. There were bones, there were mattresses, there were stuff where you can stretch. There were bones everywhere, saw bands, and they burned it down. And they're like, what FBI agent are you working with? I go, and none of your damn business. But, and, you know, it's, that's a BCA and they're dirty. They're dirty. You it's know, BCA. it is ba the Bureau of Investigations. Um, you know, you got on the reservations, it's different. Okay. I, I have no idea about that stuff. <laughs> so, there's a lot between the reservation and the actual state and the, the state cannot go on. So it's, it's, it's a more difficult situation. So they get away with a lot of other stuff. So, and there were probably five or six uh, items they found from different women that were missing on that property and they did nothing. They burnt it down. And that tells you there's a bigger system involved in that situation. Trophies. Yeah. But then, um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, and it's pretty evident and the, even the natives know that they're involved and they're just making money off trafficking and everything. So it's pretty sad, pretty sad on cases that I have to run into that. You know, it's funny. It was like when I have my friends, I go, do you want to go on a boat ride? And they're like, yeah, it's be great. And they come in their bikini and like, oh, this is going to be great. And I go, I'm grab that net. She goes, what are we doing? I go, oh, we're, we're, we're going to go look for a body. <laughs> and they're like, oh my God, Jenny, I'm like, I got to find it. <laughs> you know, that's what they expect out of me. Because that's, you know, bones and stuff like that. I'm like, I know where the area is. And we just got to, yeah. Um, Goodness, I think I prefer to be sitting on the beach and looking for bones. <laughs> Have you ever found any? I know, but I'm just trying to get out to the boat. And, what? I'm just trying to get out to the boat and find the area. You know what I'm saying? So it's just have you ever found anything positive like treasure and like yeah nice yeah I have and it's scary what the cops miss. What's nice treasure? Have you ever found like I don't know pirates treasure uh, or anything cool like that? Teeth. Nice things, not teeth. No, like treasure, oh. like gold, like oh, you know what? oh, okay, I say not, not dark stuff. I'm just trying to spin this around and bring it into something okay. nice. Like, um, have you ever like had an X marks this okay. or like, so, a pirate? Uh, for art, yeah, I've done that. So artifacts, I've done a one that was on the East Coast, and they've been looking for 
uh, this uh, treasure for a while. Their family has buried it. And the thing is, I said, the thing about when you dig up treasure has been there for a long time, there's energy tied to it. And how you, what you do with it has huge intentions and huge karma. Now, if you do something wrong with it, uh, I've seen case after case where these people end up getting cancer. You know, I'm like, you have to be careful what you're, you're doing here. So this guy, because I don't care, I'm going to dig it up. I'm like, fine. Um, and so they, they found the location of the, co the coins and everything, and they got into that area and everything. And then uh, two years later, he did die of cancer. So I just feel like, say like, uh, um, there's certain things that are actually, there's just to be given to the society and the museums. You can't think that that is yours to collect because if you do I think there's an energy along with that. And I've, I warn them too, if it's like, you can't do this, you can't just go spin this or just think trade it in because it's not going to work for you. So it, there's been a lot of things like that. And then, um, and I've talked to people that are really into the Egyptian items and stuff like that. And that is the biggest one that when I do locations, I'm like, you can't keep this at all. You will not live for two weeks after this. You, you can't, it's not yours to contain. It's not spiritually, you can't have it. You know what I'm saying? But it, it puts them in a different state. Like it's not even them. They're so addicted to having it or discovering it that they don't care. They don't care. It's scary on some things. Wow. That's wild. Yes. And then I also yeah. do say it was cursed or was it just the energy of it because it's not theirs or is it just, if you think people have well some things, uh, the spirit says some, some things are not to be discovered the the original owners which is the, the spirit is supposed to go back and claim that or go back to it so when something um goes in and touches it if their energy just even touches it desecrates it that brings in an energy which is not good. Like, you know, when you see these people taking haunted items, I mean, leave it alone or you're going to end up dealing with an issue. So um, I'm, and then on the paranormal field, I'm like the attorney for the spirit because the spirit will rat the owner out for what they're doing there every time. It's really funny. It's hilarious. Like what? Just give us an example of that. That sounds... Well, I had one couple and they said they had all these paranormal issues and stuff like that. And when I go into a paranormal place, I don't have to walk around or anything like that. I just sit at a table and, I went, and they're like, what are you doing? I got to wait for them to come here. Well, don't you have to look for them? Nope. So they came in and I go. Being in your feminine and attracting rather than having to search in the masculine. That's like, yeah, oh, so that's divine feminine the right there. <laughs> yeah. So then I'm sitting down writing stuff and they're like, what are you doing? And I go, I'm. They're telling me their story. Oh, when I'll let you know when I'm done. And I got done and I go, you're provoking them. You're using a Ouija board. They are mad. They're pissed off. And they're looking at me like, like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> they're writing this out. You know, it was big time. They do. A lot of them do that. They they go in there and provoke them and they can't figure out why they're so mad. But I, I do these property analysis, like I can go on a property and I'm like, I'm walking with the spirit and they're going over every, everything on the property, where things are, just walking through and they're just like, good grief. Um, and I, I had one gal, she says, I can't find the will, I can't find the documentation for the house. And I go, he's telling me it's in the wall. And these were, you know, I was like, and it's gross and sticky and it's got rubber bands all around it, you know, just nasty. And they did. She says, we did, we found it in the wall. It was so gross. So, and I do wills too, when they, they're, they passed on and they didn't leave a will. Yeah. That is the most funniest thing because you got the spirit telling him what he wants and the living people are mad because they're not getting everything that they want. And I'm in the middle. So it's a big argument sometimes. I'm like, all I can do is tell you. 
It just reminds uh, me of Whoopi Goldberg in Ghost. It does. Right. You know, it just because she was always negotiating with everyone. She was like, stand up. You know, yeah, we were like properly being a medium in it all, I guess. It's funny. Well, yeah, it is. Uh, it is hilarious. And so, um, so yeah, it's just a, it's a funny situation how that works out. And I, I'm, uh, I'm never shocked by anything anymore, what they say and what they will tell you. And they, you know, and I, I noticed the spirits are very good. They want to talk to the past loved ones and then the, the loved ones will turn it on to them and say, oh, do you know about her, her health issues and what she's not doing? And they do, the humans do not like that to turn back on to them and go, I don't want to talk about that. And I go, but they do. So they, you know, they wrath them out too, you know? So it's pretty funny sometimes of what they're doing. Or when I'm describing the environment they were just in and what they were doing and everything that freaks them out. Yeah. The living. It does. So yeah, the thing that I love to do is the remote viewing. I love doing that because it's you're discovering new stuff all the time. Do you teach people remote viewing or um, or how does that? Work? Yeah, I do, and I teach it blindfolded. Okay, so you have classes if people want to learn remote viewing with you. Yes, yeah. So and I go where you see a lot of remote viewers, and they give you that just that just that top layer of details. I like no. We need to go deeper in. We need more details. So I focus on more of the details, not from a distance, as in if you're standing and you're seeing it from a distance, I'm like close up. That's the remote viewing that, because that tells the difference between putting time into something and not bothering with another target. So that's the thing. And that's how I was taught is just go in for the details. So um, how do your courses work? Are they just in the States? How does it, what's the structure? No, no, they're, I do them um, one-on-one -on -one, uh, through my uh, website and I just set up a time with the person. You do it Zoom, you don't have to be in person with you, right? Nope, no. Okay. I have people all over the world that's taking the classes and stuff like that. And then from that point, then I show them real targets and stuff. And they're that they learn a lot from that, that they're shocked about what they get. Because if you put them in a situation and they're trusting themselves and in their interpretation, and then they're realizing what they got, they're in shock. Mm -hmm. They're completely in shock. And I had some of these uh, companies in the United States and I have a lot of, after they've worked with these bigger corporations, they come to me and I'm like, and they didn't get anywhere through them. They didn't get the target. They didn't reveal anything. I said, go back, tell them to go back in and do it or ask for a refund. So I had one of these ones that's in America and I go have them draw or write the description of the guy that, you know, that's involved in this. And she goes, I thought it was a picture from a five-year-old drawing a picture that has no discrim, you know, can't tell the details, can't tell you what the guy looks like or anything. And I'm like, tell him you want a refund. And she got a refund. I was just like, you are not, you know, this is, you waste people's time by doing that, you know? And that's what I don't, it's like the documentation has to follow the verification. And certainly if it's, if it, you know, a lot of people are coming who are in very compromised positions, maybe someone's passed, you know, they're very upset and very vulnerable. So just, mm, <laughs> it's dodgy doing that. But you're going to get a lot of karma if you're just messing people over. Right. Mm -hmm. And I had one, her, I described the way her father died in the hospital and I said he was murdered and he was, and they went through a lawsuit and everything. And then they got into the will stuff and I go, where's that? He's talking about a gun. And they're like, where is the gun? They go. And I described the uncle that had it knew where it was. Well, they found it at a gun shop and they did receive it back. Like a, they, they pawned it back. They sold it back for it. They, they, they pawned it and uh, they resold it. He, before the guy died, he took the gun to a shop. Okay. Right. 
and no one knew that where it was or that to it was in the it shop. or to to refurbish it or what just what yeah was it just to and the uncle um was the last person that might have known where it was right. and he was denying that he knew because he wanted the gun too and so the guy that passed on said this is where the gun's at and she went there and they said well yeah it was here and your uncle blah blah came and picked it up right and they're like i can't believe that you um he told you all that information and i'm like well you're holding the gun so i mean that's what it is i mean literally with remote viewers if you're gonna do this you're taking you're taking the risk of being you have to be right there is no there's no yes or no there's like you're gonna be wrong or you're gonna be right yeah there's no gray right and there's you you have to be comfortable taking that risk and being accurate with the situation or you're not going to be able be to do good. that yeah you've got to be good you've got to be consistent to build the confidence to be able to do it you have to start with all these things you have to just start smaller and build your confidence over time and then be a bra and be brave you have to be right. brave, you know and be attuned and make sure if you if things aren't coming through properly that you damn well get yourself back in alignment and so they do come through you know we can all go That's out of our mind. That's where I think the part of where I'm a seer, where I see through things is a little different from just remote viewing because I'm able to get in the details and I'm able to see through bodies, what's in the body, what's in everything, you know, and I, I just did a guy, his brothers died and they left a box and I described where the box was and the level it was and all that stuff too. And that's the kind of stuff I do too. You know, they're looking for stuff. I get a lot of people that are, I got to find this. And that's what I do. Or even for myself, when you're not even trying to do it, my son lost his phone on our farm. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like a needle in a haystack. And they're like, go, go 12 feet, one, 12, three, and go seven feet this way. And as soon as I went seven feet and I looked down in, in the water, it was right there. That's so much like, you know, when you're a kid and you're saying, warm up, warm up, cool it, cool it, <laughs> again that you have. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it's, and you know, sometimes you hear it and you don't even want to know. I'm like, okay, I got it. You know, like I didn't even ask yet. <laughs> they tell me stuff. Right. So it's, it's funny sometimes. So what's most um, of your work then? You're, you're an author. How many books have you written and what are they about? I've only done one. I'm working on the second one. The first one was a more of a thinner uh, getting started, getting to the basics, getting them to go on their own path and see everything through their own eyes. And the second one is totally complex because I'm doing uh, downloads and doing images. And so I'm like, by well, the time I get done, you know, it's probably gonna be 500 pages. That's a lot. I know. It's a lot of writing and a lot of drawing. So um, it's so, I'm, but I'm just doing it page by page, page by page. That's yeah. all you can do until they say you're done. Okay, it's done. So yeah. what's, uh, what's most of your work then? Most of my work um, is mediumship. And, Sorry, and then, what's the name of your book? Before we move on, what's the name uh, of your book? I'll show you. Show me. Uh, Let's have a book off. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right? It's called Walking in Humble Spirit. Beautiful. Yeah. That's cute. You can get on Amazon. Um, and I just want people to, aha, uh -huh, I know. So I love that cover. Energy Secrets, How to Live to Your Full Potential. Yeah. I love the cover. Yeah, it's cute. It's changing. 1,000 copies in this cover, and then we've got a lightning bolt coming for the, the next lot. Anyway, back to you. Go on. <laughs> that's cool. Um, so, yeah, that's – and I just think um, – I know people just produce pro books, produce books, but I'm thinking, you know, I don't think I'll do more than three in my lifetime. Um, I think that'll be it because it's just a lot, especially the second one just feels like it's – 
going to take some time. But even, I know. you know. I, know. I wrote mine in six weeks. I mean, then it was really because there was lots of edits and changes and moving things around. I did it in six months, though, from book deal to publication was in six months. But I worked my 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 butt off doing it. And I had yeah. a house for builders. So that was great fun. I was doing 18 hour days at times. That was. Yeah. That was good. It is dedication. It is dedication. Ooh. And then people say, I'm going to write a book. And I'm like, well, you just wait. You know, and I think with this one, I did a year on it because I wanted the details in there on everything. And now this, this new one is going to take a long time before they're like, you're done. Okay. And then I'll have to deal with the complex of a cover. <laughs> That's fun too. We've got like, yeah. we've got a cover coming. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So what's the majority of your work then? Majority of your work is remote viewing and teaching. I teach mediumship. I teach intuitiveness and I teach remote viewing. And I do a lot of that one-on-one -on -one because this is the reason why I do one-on-ones because everybody is, a, is at a limited veil of understanding. I'm going to adjust my teaching for the veil that you are at. Right. And not everybody in a classroom setting is at the same veil. Sure. And people are more open to do the one-on-one -on -one and be more expressive because they feel more secure in that environment than yeah. they do in open. So, and I just like it more that way. So I do that. Um, and so with my daughter finally graduated high school and she's going to be doing her thing, I'm going to do more traveling and doing more events, you know, where you have to pick between booking yourself for classes and doing these bigger events. But for me, it's different because I'm different around the public because when you walk into a room, you're already sensing all of this. Mm -hmm. And in our normal lives that people, they don't really, we don't talk about it. It's we plan out before we go to someplace and how many people are going to be there and how it's going to feel. You know what I'm saying? Because I, sometimes I do these events and I've done a two day event. And by the time I get done, I, I have a line that's, down the corner and they're they are i have assistants goes i'm sorry i i gave your your break away they manipulated me you know and i'm exhausted after two days of just going and going and going but those people are the people that came back two or three years ago when i gave them information they want to come back and verify it right. and that's, that's the whole thing that tells you how accurate you are by those coming back and telling you and verifying the information that I gave them, you know, so, so it, it's exhausting for me to do that. Cause when you're done, you don't even want to, your brain is like, I'm done. I can't think I can't process. And I've done a gallery where I did it for five hours straight and spirit was like, you're done. Don't ask another question. You're not getting it. Only <laughs> spirits taking care of you and like putting you to bed. <laughs> So, I mean, it's, and it's just that I don't like opening people unless I can close them and for what they are, are needing, you don't, because if you open them and you leave them hanging, that leaves them so confused in life. Yeah, that sucks. It's not so right. we have a responsibility of giving them the right information, leading them in the right path and shutting that door properly. So it's a very important because I get an overfill of mess ups and they come at me and I have to go through that and clean it up and send them in another direction. So that's, and I'm sure you run into that um, process. So it's part of what you run into. And so that because stuff. I just don't think people are thorough enough largely. And, you know, I just, I, I all people don't have the, the right tools or things are just slow. Uh, so I like to just get one and done with most of the stuff that I do. I expect it to be one right. and done. And if it's not, that's, I need to keep working and get better skills. <laughs> that's what it's meant to be. Yeah. And then people will order like an hour reading and I'm going, well, you better write down these 15 questions. Sure. Like, like yeah, like in 20 minutes, like yeah. boom, 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 boom. They're really fast on detail. Um, and that's the the whole situation. So, so like for mediumship, 
Um, you can be fast. I think some people are attached to time, which is interesting. Like they think that they're paying you for the hour as opposed to paying you for the information. And I think that's quite an important distinction to make. Like that, I remember this story, was it Picasso or someone? It was, it was a very big artist. Right. And they asked him to just scribble something on a beer mat when he was out. And he went to charge them. I think it was like 15,000 or something. Just say that. Oh, my gosh. I know. But then they said, um, you know, maybe it's the money today's terms. They said, but that took you to that only took you 30 seconds to do. And it said it took me 25 years to learn how to do that in 20 seconds. Right. So. Oh, but, you know, there is that side of it. You know, it's like the, yeah. the quality that you're paying for isn't necessarily related to how long it takes you to do it. If you can do it faster because you're adept at doing things really quickly, that just shows your skill set. I mean, I had the same as well. I know um, uh, some big hairdressers, Christian uh, Muscolo, who is Tony from Tony and Guy hairdresser's son. I, I grew up with him. I know I used to know him quite well. And when he cuts your hair, he doesn't, so most hairdressers, they line up your hair and make sure, and then they cut according to, but right. like, he just does snap, 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 snap. He right. can cut your hair in like a minute. It's right. done. And it's done frigging perfectly. He has grown up around hairdressers. He's done it his entire life. And he doesn't, and he does, and it's really rough. And he's pulling your hair in different directions and he does it. And it's the best haircut you've ever had. And it takes him less than a minute. And it's like, and it's quite jarring. He is quite jarring when he's doing it, but damn, he can cut hair. And so it's that innate ability, which, you know, and so that would be worth more than someone spending half an hour doing it because they don't have the expertise that he feels it. You can feel into it. Right, exactly. And that's a, another thing that I go and I call them, I do a lot of transitioning into the light getting the family prepared and getting the, the one that's passing on prepared and checking in with behind. And when the transformation energy comes in and getting ready to uh, take them. Um, and that, if you embrace it in a different way, the heartache with it changes, you know, people are like, wow, this was so much better than just sitting in it and just accepting it when you feel things that they're going through and feel them letting go. And you're a part of that. It's a gift to get into that transition stage of going into the light and knowing what I'm seeing behind him and what he's seeing. And, you know, he's like, wow, I'm like, yeah, just let go. They're okay. They got you. So, and that's, that's, that's a big part. And I do think people suffer for too long. I have an issue with how long things take, people take with things and, and suffering. I mean, suffering and grief and all of those things, you can be stuck in your grief for decades and yes. you're living this life, which is just getting smaller and smaller and darker and darker. And those things can be shifted very quickly by the right practitioners. They can just be gone in moments. Right. Exactly. And I really think it's important to just be on it like a carb on it, like just be really right. just at these things. And and with all the care and with all the depth and making sure everything is done right, but fast, just to stop the suffering from happening for so long and to stop the people coming back again and again. It's it's yeah, I've even had it over the phone with them. And there I said, these two are there. And she goes, Okay. And I'll just ask him. And he goes, Yeah. And he's like, Okay give them tell them to breathe and release and let go and she's like okay he died two minutes after we talked to you yeah you're offering a lot of closure you're offering closure from you know people right. in in every different direction you're offering closure you know where 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 is my loved one is my loved one ready to go is my loved one going you know and then doing some healing work as well you've got like closure exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Because that's what we're here to do. Lead them in the path they need to go in so they can continue in life or into the next realm, no matter what. And that's why there's a big responsibility of what you do and you're doing it accurately and right for them. Because that's what we're here to do. Make sure the doors are shut. that need to be shut, you know, and not open anything that you feel 
which you can't do. I, I just like, I'll send it to someone else. I'm like, I think this other person, this other practitioner is going to be better for this situation. And so open doors, they shouldn't open. Like, as you mentioned, Ouija boards, which are just, yeah. what does it, what the hell are you doing? Why? Why would you do a Ouija board? Like, I wouldn't even do a Ouija board now. And I'm like really in tune and I can build pretty much anything magically on the spot. It's still not something right. I do. And I can build universes. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. And that, that's a big, huge repercussion on that end of when you work with those situations. But and I think one of my favorite is the animals. You can buy them on Amazon. They are on in sale in toy stores. I looked them up on Amazon. Ouija boards you can buy on Amazon. You can buy them in any toy store. They used to have them in Toys R Us. I remember seeing one when I was seven in Toys R Us. Like, you can just buy them. And, like, that's one of the most dangerous things you could have on the blooming planet. And, you know, people get stuck and caught and all sorts of horrible things. I had a, a girl, a friend of mine who'd done a Ouija board and she was haunted by this being and he kept on telling her to do horrible things to people. She was a very sweet natured person. And then mm -hmm. suddenly she would just do something which was just really dark and really mean and really spiteful. And it was really weird because it was this Jekyll and Hyde thing that she had going on. And I was talking about doing clearings and exorcisms and all that jazz. And then she said, I've got this being inside of me and he tells me to do these things. And if I don't do what he tells me to do, he's going to kill my family. I did a Ouija board when I was 15 years old. And then they had the glass, they have a shot glass on top of it. They went to smash the glass and the bloody thing didn't smash. Right. And then this being went inside of her and it literally controls her body and she's not even driving the car of her body anymore. And she That's had, crazy. yeah, it was a really bad situation. So I ended up sort of managing to like go into her system and looking around. And it was like, I was almost like a super Mario, <laughs> like going on these different levels into all these different rooms and having a look around there are all these different beings around and demons and all sorts. So I cleared a load of them. And then I was like, I thought it was done. And she said, it's not done, it's still there. And then I said, I'm sure it's done. She came, I said, come back and, this is in a party, by the way. This was like, <laughs> we were right. in, a, in Ibiza. This was not a, like a set, like a calm right. environment. We were in a party. <laughs> anyway, so she, I said, come back in 15 minutes. And then she said, it's not gone. And I looked into the system again and I saw this wall shimmer. And I said, oh, it's something behind that. I said, maybe it's behind that. And I pulled the wall down and I saw this being, this huge, great thing. It was like this uh, humanoid thing with a snout nose and then like uh, claws and then like like little clawy things on there, but like scales. It was sort of, sort of Draco or some weird sort of thing with a snouty nose. Huge, massive thing. And I, uh, and I started, and I was like, right, Excalibur. And I pulled it Excalibur and was being like really showy, but it's, yep. yeah, but at the same time, I threw some balls at his ankles. Cause he was thinking, who the hell is this? Like, right? Blah, 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 <laughs> pulling Excalibur. It was like Thundercats. If anyone remembers Thundercats, like Thundercats. And this, I was doing this Thundercats thing, but at the same time I'd thrown these balls and the balls were actually the weapon. And then it, and he was, so I did sleight of hand and he was looking at me going, you stupid. And at the same time, this light started going up and then he started like the balls like smoke. And then he started melting like Wizard of Oz melting, like one of the witches. And then she said, I felt him, I felt this thing bubble up. I bubbled through me. She goes, I can feel it going, it literally released out of her. She felt it bubbling and, and leaving her. I bumped yep. in six months later and she went, thank you so much. You've changed my life. Like she was possessed. Like and now she was no longer doing those weird, nasty things that she was doing because she wasn't worried about her family dying. You know, so that's the sort of stuff that can happen when people do Ouija boards and they're in the toy shops. Oh. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I can see like when I'm do remote medical or something like that, but I can see those energies and then you can usually get them out by a vibration, a tone identification. There's all kinds of things, but you have to actually see them because the whole thing that their weakness is to identify them. Once you identify them, that is the main thing they don't want. Right. And then once that identification comes in, then they're revealed and then there's the challenge of it. And then, then how to identify and what we're supposed to do to get rid of it and how it needs to be eliminated. You mean that is 
wise or being wise when you say identify them? Do you mean identify on alien cap capability, demonic, any type of thing that should not be there? When you use the word from the soul out and you say, I identify everything that is negative will lose their composure because they don't know what you're seeing, but you, they have an indication that you can see them. And then you seem to see they'll, they'll drift off or they'll step back because they're not sure what you can see. Right. But then you have someone like me that they know that I can see them. It, it, it is, it's a powerful word because it means a lot in one word. Because it's, it's interesting from Hollywood stuff, and there's always nuggets of truth in these things, but they say about knowing a demon's name, and then you have yeah. to over it. Like, there's a whole thing about knowing their names, because it means some in some way that you can, then they, they become subservient to you in some, in some way, or they have to do your, your will or bidding in some way. Um, so I have books on that, and the first thing I ask when people are going through this is, have you heard a name and then I'll do the research up on the name and what they're doing and what they're they have what people have seen in the past of what they do so you take the knowledge and you apply that before you challenge them yeah and I had one at a house you research this google or do you have special books on this I've what, what oh, do you I can't Google anything. They don't put anything. I have to go to, you know, I get a lot of books from the UK because you can't get the books in the United States. You know what I'm saying? UK is one. Uh, I'm saying <laughs> to and so I have a lot of books and then I do a, the research up on the name or if I have to go to the library, but I find it and then I can identify it. And then it's funny when I can draw it, it brings the power to me. And knowing that I, this is the target, like I do with everything else, and then uh, this information comes on how to eliminate that or how to get rid of it. Mm. So just that's what I'm saying with the being a seer, you see through. That's what people understand. You know, there's mediumship, there's remote viewing, but I can see through stuff. Mm. It's solid. It's it'll show me the image, how things are inside of it, and what it looks like. So it doesn't really. And that's just the way my site has always developed into. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to talk a lot. We're perceiving, taking in information, not by saying anything. So, um, okay. So I've got a specific question. I don't want to go on too long because I do try to keep the videos around an hour, but I will get you back because you're blooming fascinating. If anyone has any questions, put them below. So um, Alexa, who's one of my psychic friends, uh, has just said that I'm a seraphim, which is like a higher level angel. Any truth in that? So this is the thing when you do that, your higher self, just say, is, is a diamond above. And there are 20 reflections of you at different times in different dimensions. So when people say, well, I traveled last night, and then sometimes I'm like, you're, sometimes you're not understanding that connection goes to your higher self. And that other particle of you is going through several things at one time. So right. then you have that memory of that. But then you realize if you look at that, you go in depth into the tail of it. There's things that you remember about it. There's details that you remember about. It. So I would tell you the first thing I would be doing is, okay, that's the image I need to see. And I need to go in and remember what I know about this. Right. You know what I'm that is the most important thing. And then you'll be surprised of what you can remember about it. And that's why everything's in the details. People can tell you, you know, you were a monster before and you were blue. That doesn't mean anything until you get to the details of everything. And then you match that up. So I feel like I told you, I think the angels were all these, they're and these incredible large warriors. And I mean, large but you're not a energy of weakness at all. So in that, you know, in that level, that would be a strong level for you. And I feel that that would be accurate, but I would definitely go after the details of, because I, when I, when I see that behind a person, I look at the details of what they look like and their facial features and what they carry and what language or um, what perception they have, all that stuff. So you want to, when people tell you that, say, okay, what do you see behind me? Right. What do you see in the details? What do you see I did? You know what I'm saying? 
because it's actually you yourself can reflect I and get so that. I was flabbergasted by that notion. I didn't even know what to say. I was like, really? I'm just trying to check it. I don't know. I, I'm still well, uh, even not sure. For my own self describe when I did a reflection, when I had formed those keys, um, and then they showed me, they're like, Jenny used to be up here. And, they, and then I looked down and I saw all these beings wearing these gold sandals, which were massive. I'm like, God, why are the feet so huge? And then they, they said, look down at your feet. And I looked down at my feet and I saw my, my feet at like the age of five, you know, and they're like, you used to be, be here all the time. So when you recognize that, then that, that memory starts to come back in mm-hmm. through that reflection of that, I call it the diamond source your higher self yeah when so you know, i think this is a whole nother conversation though i want to get yeah. into, I think we'll do that in a different one because i think yeah. that's another hour in and of itself because we've already had that conversation off camera so before we do go what's going on in new york you said that there's been some fog and some smoke or there's some weird things going on there at the moment tell us all right about- so I've been telling people on my YouTube and for almost two and a half years that there will be a fog that comes to earth and that fog, the negative cannot breathe in it and the positive will stand strong in it. So um, that fog you're seeing in New York is not from smoke. That fog is a presence of a spiritual energy that's being presented in that area because I always said that the East coast would be the first city to see the example, okay? So it's not the fog that you need to pay attention to, it's what's happening at two or three in the morning, how things are disappearing or people are disappearing or people all of a sudden there's all these bodies laying in the street and all of a sudden they're just gone. So because I talk about organic systems, I talk about clones, these are, people gotta understand they're not human. And, um, on and, that lightly, but just be careful with language for YouTube. But yeah, just touch on that lightly. Yeah, just uh, so basically, you need to be well aware of paying attention beyond the fog and what's going on. Don't get distracted with just the fog, get distracted with what's going on within the city that's they're doing. Because you know, anything like that, they're trying to distract you on one area. So, so they're saying, you know, um, seeing. Uh, people just kill over. So is that happening right now? We're getting into the process and I'll be paying attention to how long that fog stays there. And then the results of after the fog, what has happened? Because you always see the results at the end. And that will not be the first time you see these type of fogs. They may not be that color, but there's going to be another presence of this fog. Um, and what is the fog? Is it is, is it man-made or? Is this, it comes from a higher dimension of energy that they showed me because they're like, no human has seen this type of fog ever on this planet, you know? And, um, but they also said when the fog is done, like a storm coming in and as it leaves, the quietness will be reinstated, you know, like this calmness will come in after that is gone. The, uh, the people go because apparently you know a lot of psychics have been saying for a while that they think that um people are so like the um the n was it non-player character N- npcs and all yeah. that organic and all those do you yeah, think that um, all of it. I mean, half the population left on the planet some people say that half the people here aren't actually real humans is that no right? they're not not at all and they, they told me 35 percent are humans yeah so and that's hard to even understand but i do all these predictions all over the world and you can look at them on instagram where they're accurate on that stuff like the these earthquakes in california you know people think when i did the they're like no i said these are going to be consistent for three years they're not going away they're going to completely so i did the land like they showed me the levels of the land of how it was going to deteriorate and how it looks and that uh, um, that it would be like a Grand Canyon when that that completely um, happens, the big fault, and it's going to be like a divide that you're going to see and water coming in and anything that's on. I think it's from L.A. all to uh, all the way up to San Francisco. It's going to be gone right on the coast, and that the mountain. 
Yes, and that them right on the the coast, which is all those houses, all that's going to just go into the ocean. Um, and then they showed me the mountains will be sliding in because they showed me the foundation of how those levels are, and there's not much underneath there that supports that anymore. That's what they don't understand. So, and that's a you know. And I am, like I said, documentation follows a verification. So I've already, parts of it have been verified. And now I just move on to the next phase of it. Because there's phases of predictions and that's what, what California is. But they told me that, you know, in five to six years, it's not going to be a land where people are living anymore because there's going to be cities above it. Because the climate over there is- Five cities. Uh-huh. So the um, cities above it and that the, because of that climate is perfect for those atmospheres, for, for those beings to stay in that atmosphere. Oh, um, not, not for humans. Mm -mm. Are we human by your, or are we ETs or what's going on with us? Well, I mean, I'm not human, that's no way. Um, <laughs> not well, the okay, stuff that I, 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 you know, percent of people are humans. Do they know that they're not humans? And uh, I think I think they do. I honestly do. There's just um, there's a knowing inside that you you're like none of this makes sense to you, and it, it, it's it doesn't make sense to you from the, the from the get go. Okay, so but the thing is, they, they right when you're saying only thirty five percent are are humans, I'm just trying to break this down because it's just twisted my melon somewhat. So. <laughs> Um, does is are the ones who are not humans? Are they the ones who are the non-player characters? They're the ones who are like inorganic life, or, or like all these they're, they're, or are okay, they they ET they are. souls, or are they the ET incarnates? Or break it down for me, darling. Okay, so they said, talk about these organic systems, organic systems. They say when the cloned facilities are down, you're going to know because you're going to see so many patch jobs on these clones that you're like, they, you know, and they showed me a smell. They're like, they literally smell like lettuce when they start to rot and they have a stink with them and there's no recognition in the soul. And then the, the program. That's because people don't have, well, they smell peaty, don't they? I just, someone walked past me yesterday and I, and I smelled them and I was like, you smell peaty. You don't, you have too much wetness in your diet, according to Ayurveda, isn't it? Then you need to have <laughs> dry food. So otherwise you smell like a bog, like a literal PT smell of a bog. And I was like, yeah, and I literally ran after them and, and started to tell them that they need to have more. I, I've, I've, ran thought, <laughs> I've ran into several of them. That's inappropriate. I've ran into several of them and they're very programmed in what they're doing or supposed to be doing or why they're there. And, and I've had some, they're like, well, I came here to only give you this book and that's what I'm supposed to do. And I'm like, well, that's great. But you tell your, your, your master, I don't care, <laughs> you know? Um, so, so there's the programs that are connected to the AI. Once that internet process goes down, their cord will be cut. Okay. So what's going to happen? They're going to fall to the ground. Okay. So the higher intelligence that controls them will be gone. So the confusion and how they dysfunction or go in circles and then they're all of a sudden they're down on the ground. So there's, that's the thing I think people need to get ready for is that reality coming in and you're don't go get into that human uh, process and thinking that these are all humans. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they'll, you know, people, how do you recognize it? I go, cause you, you look at them and you're going to know if they have a soul or not. And these organic programs don't, this clone, they don't, there's just nothing there. And that's why I tell people it's so important to reside within your intuitiveness because that's going to lead you through the best part of you is Sweet. to have that in the process because you know, uh, mal the malfunction of it, you're going to see. And then like, there's like, you know, like zombies because they're trying to do their own patch job it's not going to be pretty all right Bro. so you've got the you've got the sort of ones which are the ones that you've mentioned whatever they are and then you're you're only saying 35 percent now the 35 percent you are human do these did these include you don't you include yourself in one of these or you do do i include myself 
I, I look at myself as a spiritual being. I just feel like I'm wearing a sleeve that I never wanted. You know suit. what I'm saying? Yeah, a meat suit. Yeah, I've always thought that. I'm not attached mm-hmm. to my body, and I, I don't think no. I'd that if I was born into a male body or a female body. I'm not, I'm not really. I don't no, really no, 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 not at all. I'm so, not, I my human, body. I just, yeah, I, I don't really relate to it. know them because their veil of understanding is that a limited veil, okay? The like the warriors that have been sent here, they are in their own path all the time. You can't get them to change their path. They are all, they're like stubborn, set in their ways. They're like, nope, I have a mission, go away. So you have those that are here as the guardians. Cool. And they're, yeah. And then, then you have the humans that are just doing their own thing and they only want to see what they want to see yeah that's the 35 percent they're saying it's not as much as you think it is they're saying well i mean i let i had something the other day which said only two percent of people had free thought were free thinkers right right which is scary it is scary because they don't even realize they've been programmed from the day one I know. And that, regurgitate that, things off the news and say, tell you that they're thinking freely and they're adamant that everything else, which hasn't been on some news station, is a Russian collusion or some nonsense. When you can step back behind the plated glass and look at 3D in one direction and look at 4D in another and going, I'm not attached to this. And I know that everything from it was a program. And then you go into your oneness and go, that has no power. And whatever that's been taught, I'm dropping every type of programming. If you can stand in that oneness and like you are outside the plate of glass looking at it in a different view, you're in your oneness power. Mm. You don't care. No one can put fear in you. No one can control you, contain you. And you're just developing in your path. Then the 4D, they're already on the path, understanding they're at a calm point. They're under, they're seeing what's changing in nature and developing and hearing and tuning into, yeah. you know, and that's what I teach my students. Like that doesn't matter. Stay over here. And they're fine. There's, they're not in that stress process. They're not thinking that is reality because to think that that is a reality, that's a warp program on its own to think that that's a reality. It's scary. Right. I am going to close because I don't want to go too long on this video for everyone because like, they like <laughs> it. Too, they don't, we're going to do another one. We'll do a series with you because you're absolutely fascinating. So tell me uh, how people can find you. At www.jennyssight.net. And all my information is on there to connect to Instagram, websites, Patreon, I think Patreon's on there. Patreon I do because it has all the documentation of the predictions. Everybody's always interested in my predictions and how they fold out. So that's the only place I can really keep and they can go back in and look at everything because I do a lot of that. Jennysite.net was it? Yeah, Jennysite.net with two S's. Can you, and you're gonna give me the, you're gonna email me them and we're gonna just put them below so everyone can have that there with a picture your headshot of you please all right so and what have you got upcoming so people can book in for you to be learning the remote viewing and psychic ability well, uh, right now um i got you know classes open for remote viewing and mediumship and i'm setting up uh with kelly wagner who owns the edge life magazine we're doing a event in um sedona is a vip event um and it's just because oh, I like to sit with the clients in a collective of energy and show them things. I'm really hands on. And I like that. I don't like that distance. I like that energy exchanging and showing them things. So we're doing something like that. And then we're working on some other VIP events because I like to spend more time in a group with people and not do a demo. Right. I'm all about one on one and sharing and expressing and answering questions so we're getting those set up and i'm working on those dates in the next two weeks with those two so and then i'm doing these galleries that are about two and a half hours so they're they're you know more intense 
It's a lot of love to share. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get you back. Okay, anything else you'd like to close with, my love? And we'll have a conversation afterwards anyway. I think the main thing is to really understand that people need to have the power to pull back the strength and know that move all the religions, all of the energy aside, all the 3D dimension stuff, and say, okay, this is my opportunity to completely connect with creator and know that that is the only thing you need to worry about is that connection with that because you have that power source now and people need to be teaching that and saying, we have to get as many going up here as we can to creation. And that's what needs to be implemented and shown instead of worrying about all this stuff that's going on here. It needs to be standing in line and getting ready for the next jump that we're going into and them feeling comfortable about it and going, yes, this is awesome because I think this event, what's happening in our world, like I told people, it's going to bring you to your knees and make you humble of witnessing this and this time. It's, it is. It's going to be, wow, we're here. We're, we're here to witness this and go through this process. So you think the light's winning? <laughs> oh, across the board. And I, you know, and the thing is, I know everybody's excited about getting these big payments and everybody, you know, everybody getting money, but I'm not actually worried about that. I'm like, I want to get to the next phase. Mm. Let's get past the money and get into the energy. What's the next phase that we need to get into? And no one's talking about the next phase after that. And, and that's, that's what I did. Energy. I felt all the cities. Right. I had to teleport and fly, man. That's what I'm, I'm looking yeah. for. All the technology, all of everything advancedly yeah, changing. Yeah, doing it internally, people. awakening our God abilities to be able to fly and to be able to teleport. I'm down for that. And yeah, that's what I want. Energy, energy, energy. Money, it ain't going to suffice me. The energy will. And evolving and changing in that will. And service. Service is what feels good in your heart. Yeah. We're addicted to it. <laughs> it's the best thing to be addicted to. But yeah, that's, that's the way it feels. And it's just driven in me forever. And it always has been. It's just like, what do I have to get to, to get back to that energy for where I came from? Mm -hmm. Again. Scratching to get back since you were in utero. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> What's gonna so yeah, I, uh, I think that is going to be an important part in time when that happens, when we are dropping to our knees going, wow, Reverend. this is amazing. Amazing. Well, you've been amazing. Thank you so much, Jenny Sight. Um, so your Instagram is what, my love? Jenny Sight again. You can go on to my website and it links to everything. Okay. So it's Jenny's with an S site.net and it will be in the links below. And yeah, then you will be able to find her. And if you want book her and also if you have any questions for the next time I interview the lovely Jenny, just put them below and I will answer as many as I can or again in my telegram. So wherever you want to put it somewhere, I can find it. And I look forward to interviewing again. And thank you everyone for joining me. Thank you everybody. Bye bye. Where's my stop button? And oh, stop.